let's talk about the Dunning-Kruger effect. You know, that psychological phenomenon where dumb people don't know they're dumb. They're actually super confident that they're smart. You know, the Dunning-Kruger effect? That, aha, I got you. That's not what it is. Everybody thinks it's something it's not. The actual Dunning-Kruger effect is the idea that the less skilled someone is in a certain field, the more they tend to overestimate their own ability, right? Wrong. I got you again. In fact, the Dunning-Kruger effect doesn't even exist. It was all just a statistical anomaly, which is ironic because that means that a bunch of scientists thought they were so smart, but in reality, they were just dumb and confident. At least that's the idea you might get if you notice this recent article from The Conversation that's been making its way around science enthusiast social media. Now, you know I try to put the best, most accurate information up here at the top of the video, so here's my best attempt at that for this topic. The Dunning-Kruger effect might be real, or it might be mostly an anomaly, and the whole thing is pretty confusing, and it continues to be a hot topic of a debate among psychologists. As a layperson, I'm not comfortable referring to the Dunning-Kruger effect as if it's established scientific theory, nor as a debunked pseudoscience, and I certainly won't be using it colloquially to dunk on people I don't like, at least from now on. Let's talk about the original study. It was published in 1999 under the title, Unskilled and Unaware of It, How Difficulties in Recognizing One's Own Incompetence Lead to Inflated Self-Assessments. It involved 45 subjects, all of whom were Cornell undergrads taking an introduction to a psychology class. Yes, that's a very small number, and yes, they're all pretty weird, by which I do not mean odd, but the acronym psychologists use to identify that overly sampled group in their field, Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. The subjects completed four different studies to test things like their ability to detect humor, their logical reasoning, and their grammar. Their scores were then compared to their own self-reported score of how many questions they thought they got correct and how they estimated they performed compared to the average Cornell student. What they found was that everybody thought that they were a little above average, regardless of how well they scored. The lowest quartile, the lowest 25%, had the biggest gap between their performance and their self-assessment, and the highest quartile actually thought less of themselves than their test results showed. Dunning and Kruger's argument based on their results was to compare incompetence to anosognosia, which is a, a disorder in which a patient is paralyzed but unable to tell that they're paralyzed, so they don't really know why they can't, like, pick a cup up off of the table. Incompetence, like anosognosia, they write, not only causes poor performance, but also the inability to recognize that one's performance is poor. And thus, the Dunning-Kruger effect was born, and then pretty quickly twisted by a game of internet telephone to mean to the general public, dumb people don't know they're dumb, and they're more confident than they should be. Over the years, other researchers have questioned the study's methods, their statistical crunching, their conclusions. So there have been dozens of follow-ups, including uh, some studies which reproduce the results in different fields, and others that suggest that this effect can actually be attributed to other causes. In that original study, Dunning and Kruger actually mention a number of previously understood cognitive biases that might contribute to why many people always tend to think of themselves as above average. They also specifically address regression to the mean, which is the idea that if you take a random sample of something and find the results to be at one extreme end, it's likely that the next sample you take will be closer to the mean or average. If you have a bunch of people flipping coins repeatedly and you pull out only the people who flip only heads, that's an extreme result that they got. If you have those same people start flipping coins again, it's likely that they're now going to be closer to flipping half heads and half tails precluding the existence of some nefarious ne'er-do-well with a double-headed coin. Dunning and Kruger admit that their study is influenced by regression to the mean. The students who scored extremely badly on the test are likely to perceive themselves as less extreme than they really are. 
those students at the bottom were also unable to really underestimate their performance because they already sucked so much. So the higher self-assessments would naturally drag that average up. That's why in their final study, the researchers tested the students once and then gave some of them training and then tested them again to see if their self-assessments would drop. They summarized, in study four, participant scoring in the bottom quartile on a test of logic grossly overestimated their test performance, but became significantly more calibrated after their logical reasoning skills were improved. In contrast, those in the bottom quartile who did not receive this aid continued to hold the mistaken impression that they had performed just fine. Moreover, Mediational analyses revealed that it was by means of their improved metacognitive skills that incompetent individuals arrived at their more accurate self-appraisals. Dunning and Kruger hypothesized that while regression to the mean and above average biases can account for some of the Dunning-Kruger effect, their data shows a significant result even when you control for those things. But it's that nasty little regression to the mean thing that just keeps popping up. So Let's talk about this article in the conversation. It was written by Eric C. Gaze, one of a team of mathematicians who found a very interesting result when running their own Dunning-Kruger effect research. They made up 1,154 people and randomly assigned them test scores and then randomly assigned them self-assessments. And the result they got looks exactly like the Dunning-Kruger effect chart. The lowest 25% of the fake people drastically overestimated their fake abilities more than the top 25% of people who underestimated their abilities. Those mathematicians also gave 1,154 real people, students at every level plus grad students and professors, the basic Dunning-Kruger test, and through their own analyses, found that people's self-assessments of competence in general reflect a genuine competence that they can demonstrate, and that carefully measured self-assessments provide valid, measurable, and valuable information about proficiency. That said, they did find that about 5% of subjects merit their being characterized as unskilled and unaware of it. A quick note, so the published date on Gaze's conversation article is May 8th, 2023, which is yesterday for me as I'm filming this, which is why it popped up in, on my feed. But Gaze writes that he and his colleagues published the results in a recent paper. The paper he links to, and the one I just described is from 2016, which I found very confusing because one of my writers at Skeptic, Bjornar, wrote about all of this back in 2020. Someone from the team involved in that research actually participated in a conversation in the comments on that post. I recommend you go check it out if you're interested in reading more. So I'm not sure why Gaze is pushing this back into the headlines now when it seems like there's other research he's been working on since. But I mean, I guess Dunning-Kruger will always be relevant thanks to its inherent memeiness. So fair enough. But yeah, it's old news. I just want you guys to be aware of this. Does that study from 2016 debunk the Dunning-Kruger effect? No, I don't think so. I agree with Burenar, who wrote back in 2020 that the way the effect has been tested and represented is really messy, and researchers have and should continue to move on to better ways of evaluating the differences between self-assessments and actual performances in order to better understand how to educate those people who are in the bottom 25% of whatever. The real takeaway from all of this is that all of us who aren't researchers actively studying this should probably just stop referring to the Dunning-Kruger effect in casual conversation. It's never been an accurate way to refer to individuals you think are stupid. It's always been a population level phenomenon if it exists outside of statistical anomalies. Referencing Dunning-Kruger when like Donald Trump brags about how smart he is, it's not only inaccurate, but it does all of us a big disservice. And I'd like to quote one of those mathematicians who was in conversation with Bjornar on Skeptic. You know, is our focus on mocking the overly confident going to turn the little engine that could into the little engine that shouldn't aspire to much? 
Are we encouraging people to be more accurate in their own self-assessments or are we shaming people into assuming that they're in the bottom 25% if they're at all confident? Are we providing people with the ability to learn and grow or are we dunking on the people that our education system has already failed? All of that isn't to say that there's not definitely a portion of the population who is ignorant, incompetent, oblivious to all of it, and, you know, confidently forcing us to deal with their inadequacies. Instead of using a mildly controversial, popularly misunderstood psychological term to describe them, I recommend we go with our existing tried and true vocabulary. We call those people assholes. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.